EV Comply, simplifying your charge point installations. Just like that, we're in December. Hello you, it's Friday the 2nd, another week, another podcast. So let's see what's been going on this week. So as we're in December, it's only right we discuss Christmas markets. But I'm going to tell you the best Christmas markets to visit here in the UK if you drive an electric car. Now, the survey was conducted by Peugeot UK, which looked at the number of public charging points that were offered within a three-mile radius at most of the popular Christmas markets here in the UK. Now, the study also looked at the charging speeds available, whilst accommodation with free charging was also scored. The research also investigated how many of the markets could be reached using the 225 mile range of the Peugeot E208. And I'm very proud to say, having been born here, Manchester's Christmas market came out on top. It also had as well the highest number of charging stations with 69 available within a three mile radius. This included 16 rapid chargers offering speeds of over 50 kilowatts. Birmingham's Frankfurt Christmas market came in second place with Leeds being placed third with its 62 charging stations, including 17 rapid units. York tops the tables though in terms of EV focused accommodation options with 19 different hotels and B&Bs offering free charging for customers, which is what we like to see. So if you're heading out to the Christmas markets, Manchester, if you've got an EV, apparently is where to go. Ford are investing $150 to boost their EV parts output from their UK plant at Halewood facility in England. They're yet to outline exactly how this is going to be invested, but listen, if it's going towards the EV industry, we're chuffed with that. Now, an interesting move from Tesla because they're now selling two home EV chargers at Best Buy. Now, it's Tesla's latest attempt to expand its influence on an industry it currently dominates. Tesla is branching out beyond its own website to sell its home chargers on bestbuy.com. Now, Best Buy offers two models, one with the projectory Tesla charging port and another with the more universal port that works on all non-Teslas, which is actually a newer product. It debuted last month in an effort to grab market share from companies like ChargePoint and Juicebox, which most non-Tesla EV owners are likely to use. So I mentioned this the other week in the podcast, BMW has hatched an EV battery with 30% more range. Now, the BMW's next generation lithium iron cell will power the automaker's new classy electric vehicles. And we're very excited about this. They're keeping a lot of it hush, I think, for obvious reasons. They don't want competitors to know and so forth. But either way, 30% more range. That is a very big achievement. Now, Reynolds are getting in massively on the EV hype. They've launched a 599 per month Megan E-Tech subscription service, servicing, insurance, road tax, breakdown cover, and congestion charges are all included in the package, which is managed by Reynolds Group's recently acquired subscription arm, BP. Now, customers can sign up for between 3 and 48 months for the scheme, which will likely deliver a flow of nearly new EV stock to the brand's franchised car retailers. There's no deposit required and a 750-mile monthly mileage allowance applies. It's a great deal and I think it should help people get into EVs. Now they're all getting in on the action. Honda is now launching a CRV-based hydrogen fuel cell plug-in EV in 2024. That's a mouthful. Now the automaker will build it at its performance manufacturing center in Ohio. Honda is accelerating its plan to produce battery EVs in the US, said Gary Robinson, who is in fact the vice president of auto planning and strategy for Honda. He then went on to say, we also will begin low volume production of fuel cell electric vehicles to further explore their great potential as part of a sustainable transportation future. Now, Honda first launched its first commercially available fuel cell vehicle back in 2002, and they've come a long way since then. 
So all eyes have been on electric van startup Arrival, and they have now appointed this week the former head of Marvel Entertainment, Peter Crienio, as the interim chief executive after founder Dennis Sulvall stepped down as CEO. Now, Sulvall will swap jobs with Crienio, who has previously been Arrival's chairman of the board. Crienio was head of Marvel's Entertainment until its sale to Disney in 2009 for four billion. Now, Arrival is in need of a superhero leadership to turn around a year married by financial difficulties with Arrival. Now, Peter Cunino said, I intend to bring the full depth of my experience to this operational role, ensuring that the company executes on its next set of strategic goals. I look forward to working closely with Dennis, the rest of the board and our employees for the benefit of all Arrival stakeholders. The UK seems to be thriving when it comes to the EV industry. ZF has opened a £70 million EV motor hub in the UK. The new R&D hub is in the West Midlands and it's already creating the next generation of electric mobility systems. The 220,000 square foot site in Shirley, West Midlands, is one of a number of research and development hubs that the company has around the world and it adds to ZF's tally of production facilities here in the UK. As I seem to have mentioned every car manufacturer, I think maybe it's right we mention this. Skoda has actually brought forward the launch of its next three electric cars by four years. That's a big jump, so from 2030 to 2026 instead. A spokesperson for the brand confirmed to Autocar that the trio will be on the market as early as 2026, with many more to follow. Now, the U-cars are expected to be crossovers. We've got a large SUV based on the Vision S7 concept and also a uh, SUV twinned with the Cupra Urban Rebel that we already know. So hopefully this will happen and we'll have three more EVs to choose from. This is exciting stuff. Plug Charging has unveiled a rapid mobile off-grid charging solution that can charge an EV anywhere, even if the driver isn't present. Now, the service is providing an off-grid via a fleet of mobile vans, which operate like an EV charge delivery service. The mobile chargers utilize off-grid green hydrogen and other green fuels with an onboard power generation system. Connected car technology does enable access to the vehicle when the owner is not present. Jared Morris, CEO of Plug Charging, said, this technology is a game changer for electric vehicles owners. Our mobile service means that people can charge quickly, conveniently and more sustainably than ever before, giving off-grid or low-grid capacity locations or people without off-road parking the ability to charge at their house. Not only that, but it also allows roadside recovery to service electric vehicles. This new addition to rapid charging infrastructure means more availability of charge and the potential for longer journeys, increasing the viability for electric vehicles. The power generated by each mobile unit can charge at a speed of up to 130 kWh and will itself only require refueling once a day. The system will be supported by an app allowing people to order charge for their EVs in the same way they would order a taxi. Now this is pretty cool. In other news this week, an EV charging station in East Kilbrid is expected to be operational before the end of the year. The 160k project hit the stoppers after suppliers installed the wrong equipment at the car park in East Mains. SLC previously said that the project had been significantly delayed due to factors out of its control. They added that incorrect equipment was installed by the supplier, with works to rectify this resulting in further delays due to issues associated with the global supply chain. But they now have given an expected timescale for the two rapid dual and four fast dual EV charging units to be brought into use. 
David Booth, who is Executive Director of Community and Enterprise Resources at SLC, said the main contractor and their power supply companies have indicated that the new EV charging units at Old Mill Road will be operational by mid to late December. So not really one I want to be telling you, but as you know, the podcast is all about informing you. So electric cars will no longer be exempt from vehicle excise duty from April 2025, the Chancellor has said here in the UK. Announcing the change as part of his autumn statement, Jeremy Hunt said the move was designed to make the motoring tax system fairer. The RAC Motor Group said it did not expect the change to dampen demand for EVs, but others, including the AA, warned the move would reduce the incentive to switch to EVs. Mr Hunt said because the OBR, the Office for Budget Responsibility, have forecast half of all new vehicles will be electric by 2025 to make our motoring tax system fairer, I've decided that from then, EVs will no longer be exempt from the VED. Now, it is a tax levied on vehicles on UK roads. At present, EVs are exempt. There are different rates depending on vehicles. Under the plans laid out this week, electric cars registered from April 2025 will pay the lowest rate of £10 in the first year, then move to the standard rate, which is currently £165. The standard rate will also apply to electric vehicles first registered after April 2017. In better news though, UK electric vehicle production is up by a fifth in October. SMMT does warn though supply chain turbulence and economic headwinds still pose major challenges for the UK car sector and its transition to EV. The UK's car lobby called on the government to take urgent action to help the industry transition to electric vehicle production, including support for high energy costs, tax reform and investment in charging infrastructure. With all of that in mind, it's great though that UK electric vehicle production is up by a fifth. We'd all rather go up than down, right? And finally, as you know, I'm a big lover of EVs. And this week I went to Arnold Clark in Stafford and I tried out the brand new BMW iX. And it is a thing of beauty. Head to our EV Comply social media pages to check that video out. From everybody here, as always, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I'll be back with you next week. (laughs) 